Good morning. Uh, I get the pleasure of teaching again, and you get the misery of listening to me, so we'll get through this. This is kind of a continuation of my last lesson. It's taking us where we are today and how the name of this lesson is Suddenly No More Time. And that's the way I feel about this, this whole thing. Everything is just going crazy. I mean, all over the world, not just in one place, all over. In Job chapter 37, verse 5, he says, God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doth he which we cannot comprehend, for he hath, he saith to the snow, be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hands of every man that all men may know his work. When the beasts go into the den and remain in their places, out of the south cometh the whirlwind and the cold out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given and the breath of the water is straightened. Also the watering, he weareth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud, and it is turned around about by his counsel, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the, whole, the world in the earth. Now this is the one that, um, this is the verse that connects everything together. Because he causes it to come whether for correction or for his land or for his mercy. And right now, things are happening in the world, it's for correction. It's to get us on the right track and get us thinking about where we are and what is about to take place. NASA's website says, the earth is suddenly spinning faster, but also our sun is getting more active than NASA predicted. Let's pray. Our dear, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I ask for your help. I ask for the power of teaching, Lord, the spirit of teaching, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide and direct every word that comes out of my mouth. Lord, help me, because I'm, I'm not a talented speaker. I'm just trying to be your servant, Lord. Help me, for I ask in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. The sun appears to have a cycle of 11 years, and I've talked about this before because this is what's going on. It's not global warming. It's, it's sun getting hotter. During this 11 years, the, the sun will wax stronger or wane. It'll get weaker. It's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. They, they measure the activity by measuring the number of sunspots on the sun. And they've been doing this since 1755, but they've never seen anything like what's going on today. The sun is quickly ramping up. It's exceeding any predictions that they've had. Solar events will continue to increase, they say, until the year 2025. It's going to affect our lives, our technology on Earth, the satellites, and even the astronauts in space will be impacted by all this. But we're seeing the impact everywhere. I was watching uh, where England is having extreme droughts and extreme heat, and their fields are burning. France is having the same problem. Uh, their rivers, the longest river in France is drying up. They can't even run a barge through it anymore. Lakes are at the lowest point. And this is all over Europe. But it's also here in the United States. But at the same time, we have all these forest fires from all the heat. We got extreme torrential downpours. And when I'm talking about downpours, we're talking about a whole state size downpour. 
where it just drops seven to, well, in Powell here a few weeks ago, we got seven inches in one night. That's half the rainfall in a year. There's large landslides all over the world where these torrential rains are being dropped. So what's going on? What, what's happening? And I might sound like a broken record, but the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I, I write unto you, for yours yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction cometh upon them as to develop upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And that's not talking about the Christians. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day shall overtake you as a thief. So when we see all these things happening, and we're supposed to get excited and get our hearts right with the Lord Jesus Christ because he's about to show up. And we're not dealing with a man. We're dealing with God. He's not going to be the lowly man of Galilee when, he, when we see him again. He's going to be the almighty God. That scares me to death. And I ain't scared of nothing. Ye are the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet and hope of salvation. For Christ hath not appointed us to wrath. Thank you, Lord. Because what we're going to be covering here in a second, it should scare you to death. And if it doesn't scare you to death, you might want to go get you an IQ test and find out what your IQ is. Because when I'm studying this stuff, it... It really scares me, and I ain't afraid of nothing. The number 70 symbolizes in the Bible, and I did this study a few years ago, it symbolizes the restoration and the end point of God. Well, it just so happens that we're now approaching the 70th Jubilee. It'll be October 5th, 2022. It'll be exactly 3,500 years from the time Moses received the law. Now that's exciting. When you start going through this, it, it's endless when, it, when you look at the number 70 in the Bible. Uh, there's 70 weeks determined in Daniel chapter 9. There are 70 Sabbaths throughout a Jewish year that can, are connected to the feast. The post-flood world was repopulated by 70 descendants of Noah, resulting in 70 nations. Terah, the father of Abraham, was 70 years old when Abraham was born. The nation of Israel began with 70 Hebrews who migrated to Egypt. Moses appointed 70 elders to be the governing body of Israel. And then it goes on and on and on. The first temple, second temple, 70 years. And it just keeps going, rotating like that. It just It's amazing. When Israel was founded, or was being talked about, the United Nations was in favor of establishing modern state of Israel in 1947 because the United Nations thought, well, since we make them a nation, all these seven nations will come in and finish the job for Hitler. That's the way the world thinks. But 70 years later, the, the Israel capital was, uh, Jerusalem was declared Israel's capital. And it goes on and on. I mean, it just 
I had, a, I don't know how many pages I had. It was just, I, I was, I don't have time to go through all of them. But what we're seeing right now is the veil of deceit is, is uh, lifting. At one time, we thought America was a great nation, a righteous nation, and God bless America and all that stuff. But the more you dig into this country, the more you find out that there was nefarious people in charge and dictating things. The World Economic Federation, Paul, Paul Schwab, he says, let it be clear, the future is not just happening, the future is built by us, a powerful community here in this room, a bunch of million millionaire and billionaires. We have the means to impose the state of the world. That means they, they can mold the world any way they want to. And that's the way they look at it. They look at you as a weed, a bug. And wait till you see what they've got in store for you. Satan is lifting the veil of deceit to reveal the evil that has been in charge all along. He just wants you to know that he's been in charge, but he's not really in charge. The Lord just allows him. When you study the book of Job, here Satan comes in and destroys his family. And what does Job say? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's all about God. It's all about God. Look around you. The world's religion is in your face. The Christulum. As described in your King James 1611 Bible. Amazing, isn't it? Many Bible teachers have been connecting the jab, the Georgia Guidestones blowing up, the assassination and removal of world leaders, and that's in the, it's still going on, and CERNs, they've connected it to the UFO aliens, and the coming beast system and the new world order. They're all connected. And we don't have time to go into all that. I don't know how many stories I listened to this week of people in national parks seeing crimeers, half animal, half human, giants, They're showing up everywhere by people who are not crazy, not loony. It's usually park rangers, military people, people that are trained observers. And they're in such shock they don't have time to, to bring out their phone and take a, a selfie, you know. Insurance companies are reporting, and I'm reading the, these, this list of news articles that I've look, looked at. These are news articles. Insurance co companies are reporting a conservative, this is, I put it, this in there, a conservative number because this, this number varies according to what article you read. But they said that the increase in deaths over the last couple years is up 40% around the world. Hospitals are running short of doctors and nurses because they're being worked so hard and they're being exhausted to the point where they have to quit in order to save their own lives and sanity. So what's going on? Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And after this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be hereafter.
We're about ready to go home. We should be getting excited. We should be getting our hearts right with the Lord. This is the most important thing. It doesn't matter how you started in your Christian life, but it sure matters how you end it. I've read this several times, and I was watching a video that uh, a preacher was talking about this, and it made a lot of sense. He says, and it's found in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15, and we'll be going for that chapter a lot. He says, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at an agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge. God's being sar sarcastic here. And under falsehoods have we hid ourselves. So what is the covenant with death? I believe that this covenant is with the CDC. Too many things are happening. Increase in death rates. People are being crippled. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the vessels... I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow. Now, if you look at this picture that I drew up here, this guy has a bow. Can you see it? It's real pretty. It's a, it's a rainbow. This is the Antichrist. And a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And we're going to be looking at Daniel chapter 11 a lot, too, because this kind of connects. When I looked at verse 20, I always thought that this was two separate people, two separate beings. But I'm not so sure now. It says, Then shall... Stand up in his estate a riser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. For within a few days he shall be destroyed neither by anger nor by battle. Could it be that this person and the Antichrist are all one person? Of course, we got a tax that, that they're looking at putting on everybody, is called the carbon tax. It'll tax your very existence. That's why they're hiring all these new IRS agents, so they can make sure they get all their taxes from you. You're going to be taxed on food, your existence, your air, your excrements, etc. So, Here's a riser of taxes, and he dies pretty quickly. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. Man of sin. And then it says, The son of perdition. These are two separate people, son of the man of sin, son of perdition. Could it be that this, these two spirits occupy the same body? And I believe that's the way it is, and that's the way the Bible teaches it. The Antichrist is going to die, and then the son of perdition is going to take over his body three days later. So who's the next person Look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 21. It says, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person. He went from a tax collector to a vile person. It's not much of a switch. To whom they shall 
not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Here's a man who collects taxes, he dies, and then he resurrects as a vile person, and the whole world loves him. Have you ever thought that maybe that's the reason all these sexual perversions are being pushed on everybody? Because what's coming is a vile person? And he'll be more acceptable to this world if everyone's vile like him? Daniel chapter 11, verse 37 says, Neither shall he regard the father, or the father of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god. He shall magnify himself above all. The governments of this world are trying desperately to, to normalize any type of sexual perversion that you can think of, including pedophiles. The government is giving them more rights than your children have rights. And you say, what, what are you talking about? When you're right, your children don't have the right not to be molested, you went over the line. But this is what is acceptable in our day and age. And it will make the beast more acceptable when he comes. This, these people are going after children with no fathers or a one-parent uh, uh, family. That's why they're trying to break up your families to get to your kids. Yeah. That's why the devil wants you to leave your wife, leave your children, and let the state take care of them. I watched a video this morning of a of a child's protective service worker who was telling a little 14-year-old girl that she needs to become a prostitute. That's advice. This should tell every father and mother to keep their marriage together for their children and protect them. And grandfathers, protect your grandchildren. Man has gotten to the point now where instead of calling on God for help, he curses God and calls on the government. What a world we live in. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and this is what I, I get in, you know, you wouldn't believe how many arguments you get into talking about the book of Revelations and the fact that this this. Seven, this is going to be a seven-year tribulation, not a three-year, three-and-a-half-year tribulation. But this is about as plain as it gets. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So this Antichrist is going to be in charge for, for one week. But in half of the week, he breaks the covenant. It says it right there, in the midst of the week. What's a week? That's three and a half days. That's the midst of the week, or three and a half years. And he shall cause the sacrifice of oblations to cease. And then he starts, he goes into the temple, and he starts the sacrifices, cannibalism. And wait till we get to the pale horse. There are 21... of these uh, plagues that God brings down on the earth. Seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials. We're only going to cover four of them. And I'm all ready to go home. <laughs> but in the first seven, seven and a half years, he confirms the covenant with Israel he confirms the covenant. The covenant's already there. It just has to be confirmed by him and the CDC. He sets up a carbon tax and community organizers. We've seen what community organizers can do to a city in a very short time. 
it'll turn it into a heap of rubble. He sets up ten, ten kingdoms and ten kings. Three and a half days he's killed, or, or three and a half years he's killed. And after three days his body will be raised up with the son of perdition, a vile man. And he makes abomination desolate, and that's cannibalism. He'll start killing the Jews and cannibalizing them. Want the reference? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13. Six, verse 13. Revelation chapter 13, verse 4 and 5, it says, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast. And they're already worshipping the dragon right now, today. It's going on all over America, and a lot of churches are into this. They say, who is like unto the beast and who is able to make war with him? Because when they killed, he died the last time, he got up. How many people do that? And there was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and power and was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. That's 40, that's three and a half years. America and the world worship the spirit of convenience. And this spirit is going to bring America right into the beast system because no one wants to be put out. No one wants to be hungry. Nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody wants to do anything. They just want to be taken care of. Revelation chapter 6, 3, that brings us to this. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see, and there, was, there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat, upon, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth that they should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Now, a lot of people taught in the past that this is communism. Russia and China. Well, lo and behold, every country in the world is communist or socialist or some type of, of handouts. So we can't look at Russia and China, although China's economy is crumbling. I mean, their economy's crumbling fast. America's economy is crumbling fast. European economy is crumbling fast. The whole world's in trouble. And when that happened the last time, World War II brought us out of it. So look where we're at. The red horse, in my opinion, has the same rider as the white horse. He's just got a different outfit on. When we look at what's going on in, in our world, it's not a pretty picture. I mean, these they're going in and they're hiring people. They're giving them $1,500 a week to go in and destroy a city and then they never get prosecuted they're turning our children into killers every week it seems like there's a child uh, a school shooting or some kind of mall shooting anywhere the people aren't armed that's where they go they're cowards Daniel chapter 11 verse 22 says and with the arm of the flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. That kind of goes along with Revelation chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. It says, and the woman was given great wings at an eagle and she flies into the wilderness. And when she's there, the devil 
sends a flood, and the, servants, uh, the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. This flood might be an army. When you read Isaiah chapter 8, verse 7, it says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the rivers, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory. And if you look at the Assyrian in the Bible, it's mentioned 13 times, and it all is in reference to the Antichrist. So we're looking at this, and we're going, okay, that's the Antichrist. He's bringing a flood. And you go to Job chapter 40 and talks about Bohemoth. He says he drinks it up a river. There's a lot of things connected in the Bible that you might not put together unless you read the whole thing. <laughs> the Bible's amazing. It's all interconnected. He shall come up over his channels and up over his, all, all of his banks and he shall pass through Judah and he shall overflow and go over he shall reach even to the neck and the stretching out of the wings shall fill the breath of the land O Emmanuel so we're this, this antichrist this red horse is going to be overwhelming When you look at Daniel chapter 20, 11, 23, it says that he takes over with a small people. And everybody thinks, well, you know, we're the majority, we can rule, but are, we're not, the majority's not doing a very good job of it right now. But they didn't do a very good job when Hitler was in power. Only 15% of the population agreed with Hitler. The rest of them went along with it, and 60 million people died. And the same thing happened in communist uh, Russia, or when before Russia was communist. We are in trouble if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you know the Lord, rejoice. We're going home. We get to stand before an almighty, all-powerful God. And the more I read the Bible, the more I understand that God doesn't care what David Valance thinks. The only thing he cares about is his word. He's an almighty, all-powerful, all-righteous God. The only way, reason we're going to be there in the first place is because he imputed his righteousness to us. We don't have no righteousness. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. When you look at uh, Isaiah chapter 19, verse 3 to 10, it talks about the spirit of Egypt. This, when, it, when it's referring to that, I, I believe that's probably more than likely referring to the world because Egypt is a type of the world in the Bible. But when it says here in verse 3, it says, And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and, they sh and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to idols and to charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to wizards, and I believe it's referring to us because that's all you see anymore. It's all about witchcraft. It's all about charmers and evil spirits. I mean, watch TV a little bit. You can't watch TV. You can't go to a movie because the movies are so vile and full of all this uh, witchcraft. It's, I watch the trailers just to see what's going on, and it's horrible. But in verse 4, he says, and the Egyptians I will give over, or you can say, and the world will I give over to the, into the hand of a cruel lord. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord of hosts. 
Now look at this. And the water shall fell from the sea, and the rivers shall be uh, wasted and dried up, and they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall empty, and the dry, dried up, and the reeds and the flags shall wither. The paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown in the brook shall wither, be dry, uh, driven away, and be no more. And the fishers shall mourn, because there's not going to be any water to cast their nets into. And that's what we're looking at right now. If you're not awake, you need to wake up. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. God is in control of all this. Satan, he's allowing Satan to do this to fulfill his will. So don't ever get down and say, you know, that dirty devil and stuff. No, a lot of this we brought on ourselves. The church is asleep. It's been asleep for a long time. Amen. Revelation chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And when he opened up the third seal, I heard a third beast say, Come and see, and behold, a low black horse. And he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. They're already talking about food shortages. And they're telling the farmers not to grow as many crops, and they're, they're taking uh, their cattle, and they're, they're euthanizing the cattle, and they're bringing inferior cattle from overseas, bringing it over here. Like they, they need to keep their food over there because they're going to be hungry in it shortly. Farmers for years have been told to, to grow and not to grow and how much to grow and all this stuff. It's pretty much a uh, subcontractor to, to the government. The time of tribulation says that the food will be available, but it will be strictly in, uh, controlled by the Antichrist, and you have to have your mark, you have to have worship the beast, and you have to do all this ugly stuff. I'm like, I hope I'm not painting a pretty picture of the tribulation. <laughs> New York Times, I said this last, New York Times is promoting cannibalism for when we have food shortages. It's coming. Chinese cannibalism of infant flesh outrages the world. Scientists propose cannibalism to save the climate by the Swedish TV. You can watch this on the internet. Global cabal, that's Klaus Schwab, promotes Diets of bugs and cannibalism for the next food shortage. My wife is a real milk drinker. Waggles can thank her for all their new facilities because we paid for it because she loves milk. She loves Waggles milk. But now they're coming out with a new milk. It's called roach milk. And it's not made by little uh, marijuana doobies or whatever. It's, it's made from real roaches, real roach milk. And they're bottling this stuff, and they're selling They're They're trying to, to sell it to people. And of course, you know, they've got, they got people out there growing human flesh and selling it on the market as salami. I've told you that years ago, and they're still doing it. I checked on it the other day. Revelation chapter 6, verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice and the fourth beast saying, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him 
was death. You know, that's real popular today, you know, death. Everything you look at, death. Everything's got a skull on it. Everything's got a, you know, is associated with death. So this guy's going to fit in really good in this country and around the world. And I looked, behold, a pale horse, and him set on him was death, and hell followed him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death with the beasts of the earth. Those little uh, animals that you have in your house, during the tribulation, that little Fifi is going to chase you all over the house trying to eat you. The fourth part of the earth. This is only the fourth seal. You still got a lot more to go. And he says this is going to kill one fourth of the earth. That's two billion people. Maybe more. I hope I'm not painting a pretty picture. The world will receive God's wrath. And I believe it's because of all the children that the world has aborted and has killed over the years. God's wrath is finally up. God's long suffering ends. And the wrath of God is poured out on this world. Child sacrifice in the Bible is one, one of the most abominable things that God talks about. Amen. Today, the same practice is happening under the women's rights movement. And what's that got to do with killing babies? Women are supposed to be loving, caring, nurturing females. But today, those women don't want to get pregnant. And if they do get pregnant, they want to have it killed because they don't want to mess up their looks or they don't want to lose their bodies or whatever. Someone sacrificed their body for them, didn't they? One of the head witches, and I'm going to skip this, but Margaret Singer started this atrocity as far back as 1921. And this um, birth movement or birth uh, abortion movement started going through in 63 and by 1973 just 10 years later what was done in the dark is now done in the open and people are proud of it and protesting because they don't but the only reason that Roe versus uh, over, was overturned by the Supreme Court is because it, all that whole trial was based on lies there wasn't no truths to it For years, God's been waiting for the church to cry out to God for forgiveness, but the church remains quiet. Bibles removed from schools, churches, governments, and homes. False gods and Baal worship and Hinduism and whatever else has priority over every church in the, in the country over the God of heaven, the almighty God. Christians are turning a blind eye to all the, the children, to all the children that have been sacrificed to Satan, these satanic rituals. There's a blind eye. I, I'm, you can't stress this enough because most people don't believe it because they've never seen it. It's not on the news. Sexual slavery that is mounted all, all over the, the world year after year, the number of people, young women and young men and children that disappear is frightening. I think just this year is something like 500,000. And we haven't finished the year out. 
Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 2 says, I will utterly consume all the things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heavens, the fish of the sea, and the, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnants of Baal from the, this place and the name of uh, Chitterim with the priest, and that means adulterous priest. And them that worship the host of heavens upon the housetops, and them that worship and the swear by the Lord, that swear by Malcham, and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor required for him. Aren't you glad you're born again? I don't want an almighty God after me. And this is the last part of the verse. We started out with, with this, or this chapter, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line and the righteousness to the plummet. And the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding places or hiding place and your covenant with death shall be disannulled thank god for that because remember the world makes a covenant with death the jews are included in that but god disannuls it to save israel and your agreement with hell shall not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, yea, ye shall be trodden down by it. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you hear me say this every time I get up here, but this is the... I, the Bible says that some people were saved out of fear of hell. And that's a good reason to get saved. But the benefits are unbelievable. I don't know what you would do without the Lord Jesus Christ or how you live your lives without him. He's the king of kings and lord of lords, and he is he's the greatest blessing in the whole world. Amen. And the world is thunder nose up at him. I feel, I feel for you if you got unsaved loved ones. But we're, we're here. There's no more time. We're about to go home. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson lord i pray lord that it touches our hearts and encourages us to live for you lord it's not about us and it's not about how much you love us and how great we are lord it's about the lord jesus christ it's about your blood that was shed on calvary it's about your sacrifice and taking your sins our sins upon you lord who knew no sin and nailing them to the cross. Lord, help us. If we're not right with the Lord, help us to get right. If we're not saved, help us to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today because there is no more time. Blessed be your name, for I ask in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.